Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. So we've reached the point of our off-grid electrical journey, for those of us who are following. This will be, I think, the third video of the series. Part one, we built the wooden solar ground mount array. Part two, we mounted the panels to the wooden solar ground mount array. And now part three, we're juicing everything up and telling you guys how we are juicing it up and how the juicing up goes. Let's go. start this story, we're going to have to go back in time to this morning. It is the morning and with our power situation right now, we run our generator throughout the night. It is able to run about 20 hours on one tank of gas, which is really awesome. The reason we run our generator overnight is that we have some appliances inside the camper that need to run all night. We have the heated water hose for our camper, since it is the dead of winter, that that needs to run overnight. And otherwise we would deplete the Blue Yeti and not be able to use solar at night. So I'm gonna go walk over here. You guys come with me, turn the generator off, kind of let you see that situation. And then we'll talk about the power situation as a whole and everything, all the components and all that stuff. So the generator is an inverter generator, so it is super quiet, which is really, really nice. The last thing we want to hear, and especially the neighbors want to hear, is that thing going all the time. I want to say that it's around 50 decibels at running. What you heard now was its baseline, which is, you know, very minimal power usage. Obviously, as we like fire up the toaster oven or the microwave or something, it will rev up to meet the electrical demands, but usually it's pretty quiet. So that's nice. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch everything over from the generator to the Blue Yeti so we can run off of solar. This is the cord for our water hose heater. We don't need that right now. This is the main camper power. So we transition from the generator into the carport to the Blue Yeti. So we'll go ahead and plug up the camper. We have this little adapter here. This adapter converts it from the camper plug to a regular house style plug. So it goes in there and then we turn the AC on. That kicks on the inverter and is now powering the camper. As I look, the camper is currently using 347 watts and the solar array right now at 10 o'clock in the morning is producing 560 watts. So, very cool. Over here on this side is the solar input. We've got a string of cables. This is the core that comes with the Blue Yeti. And it's got an adapter. This comes with the Blue Yeti. And then where it stops is here. These are your MC4 connectors. These are specific to solar connections. They're waterproof and they are positive and negative, color indicated. From here, these are 50 foot long 10 gauge wires. They run from here in the carport out to the solar array. So we'll go out there and I'll talk just a little bit about how they're wired together to give us the power we need for this setup right now. So welcome to our solar array. If you have not seen this build, there's two videos on it. There's a link to those down below. We have four panels right now and these are rated at 270 watts brand new. These are old commercial off-lease panels. We bought them used. So they put out, I want to say around 225 watts. So still perfectly fine. It was very cheap to buy them used. I think we paid a quarter per watt. So that was a great deal. I'll put a link to the company where we got these from down below as well. So right now we have four panels and the way that Blue Yeti can handle voltage, I'm able to run these four in series. 
What that means is each panel has a positive and negative. So I hook the positive to the negative, positive to the negative, positive to the negative. Pretty much creating one big loop from this whole four panels, turning them into one giant solar panel. What I'm left with in the end is one positive and one negative wire coming out of this jumbled mess. And I've not cleaned the wires up yet, so they will get cleaned up, don't worry. So from here, it runs into the carport to the Blue Yeti, and that is our solar array. Now the reason I chose to do these in series is because I wanted to have as much wattage going from here to the Blue Yeti as possible while still maintaining being within the voltage range that the Blue Yeti can handle. Every solar array is very unique and very specific to the components that's connected to it. So don't take for granted that you can connect four panels in series and it'll work great for your system. You've got to check the voltages of each panel, multiply them, figure out how much it's going to push to your unit, your Blue Yeti or whatever box you have, and if that box can handle that voltage. So that being said, it's very specific and unique to our setup, but this is working well for us so far. It is now two o'clock in the afternoon. Our panels are in full sun. So let's go on in the carport here and see exactly how much power we are bringing in from our solar array and pumping into Blue Yeti. Uh-oh, we have a fault. What's the fault? Adapter over current. Oh no, too much power. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so we are over paneling the Blue Yeti and we are overloading it on solar power. Solar electricity says, nah, and Blue Yeti says no. So this is a good showing or a good example of what happens when you overload a Blue Yeti. It'll actually just stop the allowing of energy coming in and it won't fry itself. So very cool, it's got built-in faults. The AC side is still pumping out juice to the camper. We're currently using 84 watts, so not much, but then again, we're not really doing much in there right now anyway, so cool. So what's cool about the Blue Yeti is that even though we are over paneling it right now and we are pumping too much juice to it, as the sun moves, it gets lower and we don't produce as much electricity, it'll automatically pick up and allow it to come back within range and then start pumping juice to it to charge the batteries. So that's pretty cool. However, that being said, I don't like that we're over paneling it and we're causing faults, so I'm probably going to take one of those panels out of the mix. To take one of the panels out of the mix, it's as easy as disconnecting the two wires that come out of it. So we'll pick on this one. Just take these out of the loop and then connect the ends that are then free, plug it back into the Blue Yeti, and you've successfully removed a panel from your series and brought yourself back into proper voltage so you don't upset Mr. Blue Yeti. All right, cool, that fixed it. Blue Yeti's happy. The battery's at 100%, so it's not going to show any kind of power coming in from the solar array, but that's because the battery's charged and it doesn't need to do anything else with it. I did check the voltage, it's down to 104, so that's well within the working range, and so we should be good now. So that was bad on us to juice up Blue Yeti that much, but at least it shows you guys the real life, how it shuts down, saves itself from catastrophic failure, and how to fix it when you have a solar array like this. Welcome back. Now we get to have a little um, tell. We had the show, now we have the tell. So what are your thoughts as far as our off-grid power setup? How's it working? What are the problems? What are the great things about it? So far, I have been actually really shocked. I am somebody that has known not, nothing. Not literally shocked. No. I'm, no. Not, no one's been shocked yet. Anyway, shut up, Sam. <laughs> I have been totally shocked because I know like close to nothing about solar other than wow it's magic <laughs> so I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to run my vacuum cleaner that I couldn't use the toaster or the microwave and I've been shown wrong that you can use all of those things and some even at the same time and it's not a big deal mm -hmm. and we have so much sun out here that you know at least on the bright sunny days it like keeps up with it really well yeah totally totally as you guys saw earlier we had to take a panel out of the loop of the series because we were juicing up eddie too much that's what we call the blue eddie his name's eddie so it's pretty cool that we have the capability to run solar and our generator i have to say out of truthfulness this video uh what we've had the generator for a month i believe probably that generator knock on wood thank goodness has been perfect no hiccups no issues 
I mean, we got it out of the box, and okay, well, there was one little tweak that I knew was going to happen. But anyway, outside of that, so we did buy the generator, and that was an expensive cost for us. I want to say it was around $900, but kind of along the lines of buy once, cry once, and it's well worth it. It has been great, and I don't regret investing in that. Um, for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, why didn't you just get your temporary power pole? Mm. It was going to be more expensive. We were looking at 1500 or more yep. in order to do a temporary power pole, which we wouldn't benefit from in the future because we would have to then get our regular power pole for our home. So this is something that we can use if we have power outages or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It has more than one purpose. Definitely. Also adding to that, that the power company out here did not like the idea of us getting a temporary power pole. They said, yeah, you can do it. It's really not designed for what you guys are doing. It's really more construction, blah, blah, blah. So honestly, if we could somehow set up an off-grid system and not have to hook to the grid, although I think we will anyway with the house, mm -hmm. but if we can have as much off-grid generation of power, that would be awesome in my book. It would, I agree. One more level of being self-sufficient and not relying upon something, so. You don't have to worry about power outages that way. Right, or if you do, you know exactly who to reach and fix the power outage, don't you? Yep. <laughs> as far as limiting factors of our system, by far, it is the battery capacity. Blue Yeti only has a 2,000 watt hour battery, which means that we can pull 2,000 watts out of it for one hour and they're done. So that is probably the biggest limiting factor. We're able to run throughout the day completely on solar because we rarely, well, rarely have to pull or use more power than it's generating from the array when it's sunny. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of clauses to that one, I guess. So even though our battery is a limiting factor, it still works really well for our setup. And I think probably anyone else in our shoes could be able to run off of this fine. I mean, between the generator and the Blue Yeti, we've got all the power we need plus more. Mm -hmm. Well guys, thanks for coming along as we showed you our solar setup, how we use it, and how we kind of go off grid with our camper. Um, if you have any questions or comments below, leave them for Sam because I don't know this stuff. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on one of the homesteads. See ya. Bye. Right. Yeah, we did buy that generator and what am I saying? What is this? I don't know. You're excited. <laughs> Well, I am. <laughs> Construction, blah, blah, blah. So, it's fine. Honestly, if we could come out, come out. Dang it. <laughs> that you ask, and then I'll try and answer. Um, <laughs> and then I go blank. <laughs> Are you want to try it again? I guess. Okay. Well, guys, thanks for watching us. Well, okay. thanks for coming along as we showed you. Okay. Well, guys, thanks for coming along as we showed you our solar.